welcome out. Welcome to another day out and another adventure. I've got the microphone tucked down my shirt, so I'm just covering it up a little bit just to try and keep a bit of the wind noise off. It's not extremely windy, but there's a bit of wind. Uh, we're in a very open area, as you can see behind me. Um, I'm not out alone. I'm out with Mrs. C at last and uh, Owen. We managed to drag her out for a Sunday afternoon. We're going to go for a bit of a walk, take a couple of photographs of uh, quite a popular area. I've been here a couple of times. I've been here recently on a video that you've seen. Uh, if you don't recognise the place, I'm up at uh, the Roaches in uh, the Peak District, not far away from home. It's only about 35 miles away from home, so it's a nice little place to come. We started at the far end. You can see there in the background, there's the barn. That barn's been shot a hundred times, a thousand times. Uh, quite a popular shot with the barn and the trees, either looking from that side this to this way or this side to that way with the evening light because the sun goes down behind you there. Um, so yeah, that's been shot quite a few times. I think I might take a shot of it today as well. A um, couple of shots maybe. Might take one with a bit of a longer exposure to get all the trees and the clouds moving. Uh, may blend the trees back in and just have the clouds moving on their own. Um, so I might take a shot of it anyway. The light's not great and I've just noticed there is a massive, massive rain cloud or rainstorm coming over in the distance and it's heading this way. So I think the first thing we're going to be doing is getting our waterproofs on because we are going to get drenched. So it's going to be one of those afternoons, I think, uh, in between the showers and the, and the sunlight. So yeah, I'm going to get the camera out, set up an image and I'll come back and talk to you. But that's where we are. Join us today at the Roaches. Be nice to maybe explain what I'm actually doing at the moment. Um, I just said I was going to set the camera up for the barn, which is in the background. But what I'm trying to do, I think Denise and Mr. Rowe are going to shoot with that big boulder in front of it. And yes, it's quite a nice big boulder to put in foreground, but I think the boulder's overpowering. What I'm trying to look at is whether I can get in a position where I can see over the wall and see through the wall and get the barn through the wall. Because I like the idea of having the stone wall in the foreground, but I don't want a lot else. Uh, from here I've got the rocks behind it as well, so that's not bad from down there. So I think I'm going to set up here, get the wall in the foreground, and then get the barn, the trees, and the rocks behind it, and the dark clouds. I think that'll do for a starter. Definitely, yeah, we'll go for that. So I've got the image set up. Uh, it's quite a nice little image. I like the, the gap in the wall where I've put the barn. Um, I'm not quite sure of the trees on the right hand side where they're just touching the top of the wall. I might lift it up slightly, but by lifting it up, I start to get the top of these trees that are in front of me uh, coming into the image. I have to set to wait for a sheep to get out of the way because the sheep was right in the middle of my image. The trees are okay, the where they are. I quite like the actual image itself. It's quite dark, but I've got bracketed exposures the sky is really quite dark and moody. I think I might just lift it up slightly just to see if I can actually just get the bottoms of those trees in because I think it needs them in to make the image work. And that wind's getting up, but the storm's, the storm's blowing over a different way, so that's not so bad. Let's have a look now. I'm having to bracket the shot slightly. Um, the reason being, I'm going to move forward. We'll see if we can get rid of them trees a bit. I'm going to have to move forward. Come with me. Come with me, you can't see what I'm doing apart from me bomb, can you? Right, I've just had to move forward slightly to try and get rid of these trees that are bouncing around though in the wind. But uh, yeah, I'm trying out this new 18, 16 to 80 lens. Um, I've only had it a short time. I'm just trying it out and seeing how we get on with it. But I'm getting the camera nice and level. Focus on the wall to start with in the foreground. And uh, just wait for these trees to bounce out of the way. I'm going to take the two second timer off and I'm going to do it by hand as a starter image. I think that'll do me. Um, but yeah, the uh, 16 to 80 mil. Not sure how good it is, how sharp it is, but it's a lot lighter to carry than the uh, 16 to 55. So yeah, it gives me a bit of a good range on there. It'll be interesting to see how well it works. Right, so my camera's still in sort of night mode where I've been doing the, the Astro work. So I'll just gonna flick that back over if I can get my finger on it. Not very easy with these stumpy fingers. Right, job's done. Uh, yeah, let's move on, try and find something else. Um, let me know what you think of the images as I take them as well. I'm always interested to know your thoughts and your opinions. I know this barn, barn's been shot at some really nice conditions and I'm sure I've taken some in the past as well. I might go and have a look at the other side though, just see what it's like looking back. It's 
Rowe's got a new lens, a 5140 uh, uh, for the Fuji, and he's addicted to it. He doesn't want to change anything. So all of his images from now on will be in the range between 50 and 140, <laughs> which is good because Denise wants a wide angle. So um, yeah, just walking along and I spotted these two posts, which I quite liked. And I thought, I wonder whether I can actually get the barn in between them. And on the video camera, I can, but on the 16 mil, it's not quite wide enough. But what I don't want to do is go to a wider one because it's going to pull the two posts um, it's not going to look quite square, so I've taken it with a 16mm. There's a few little leaves just in the top of the image, but I think I quite like it. I like the fact that you're looking through the gate post, so you're sort of welcomed into the image. So uh, yeah, that works quite nice. I'm just going to walk a little bit further now over to the to the right and try and get one shooting back with a light hitting it. Um, and then we're going to move up onto the rocks. Looks like Denise and Mr. O have stopped down a bit closer, going for a wider angle shot, looking through the trees, which again is another quite nice shot. I've come a little bit further back because I wanted to try and get a bit of this uh, blue sky with some fluffy clouds in. Uh, so I've got all the trees and the barn in the bottom of the image instead. Uh, F11, ISO 160, and I bracketed the shots. It looks all right. I tried to get that little wall in just there as a lead in line, but I'm not quite sure whether it works. I just thinking out of the box, you know, just trying to find something to add to the image. But by coming around here, let's just have a look at the, recompose it. Uh, we can, it's not very easy to see with this bright light on it, but uh, recompose the image slightly, go a bit wider, try and bring this wall in. We need to go a bit closer to the wall. Uh, I've got spikes on the tripod, so it's digging in quite nicely. And I'm shaking you around because I'm hand holding you. Um, but it's a way I can use the camera at the same time. I suppose it works. I get the camera sort of level, go a bit wider, maybe go to 16 mil. It makes the barn look a little bit further away. But you actually get the wall coming in from the bottom right hand corner. And if I focus on the barn, which is short of the barn at F11, uh, it would work quite nicely. I think I'm going to bracket the shot, put a two second timer on. I'll clone out Mr. O and uh, Denise. That's not a problem. I can just block them out or we'll wait till we move and I'll just take another single image just to use that little spec to clone them out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice little scene. It's, you know, it's a nice country scene with the barn and the trees. You can imagine someone actually living there would be quite nice. There's some more behind us as well. But there are, looks like there were some grand houses or something uh, on the side here. I might have a look at them in a minute, but the sun's coming out. It's getting a bit bright, which is not ideal, but it's enjoyable. It's a nice day out. It's nice and cool. It's a cool breeze. The rain's laying off, so uh, yeah, we'll just make the most of the day, if nothing else. It's not about the pictures, it's about being out sometimes and just enjoying the country. It's nice getting Denise out as well. I know some of you have waited a long time for this. Look, she's here. I haven't buried her in the back garden or anything. She's still around. She's uh, just pinched Mr. Rose 10 to 22, 10 to 24. Uh, she wanted a wide angle lens. She's got this new phone, this new fancy little phone. It makes some really nice images. So she said, look at this. So that, looks like the shot? Christmas list is going to get a bit bigger. You're on bracketing. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. She's on bracketing. She's out at 10 mil. Taught her everything she knows, you know. And then she forgot it. And <laughs> <laughs> she forgot it and taught herself. Oh, these two are conspiring against me. I'm sure they are. <laughs> the two of them are ganging up on me. It's not nice, but I can take it. I can take it. Uh, no, I can't. But yeah, no, this is uh, this has been shot a lot of times. It's uh, quite popular. The sun goes down somewhere in that region, so you get some nice colours in the evening. And also in the snow, it looks pretty good in the snow. So it's dead easy to get to. The road's literally 100 yards that way. So and there's some bit of parking down here as well nice little spot now we're going to make our way up probably the side of this wall or head through there and then up we're going to find a way to squeeze through and climb on up there is actually a way over the wall there but not so easy so we'll head up that way and we'll find a way mr o 10 24 so I've nicked Mr O's 1024 because Paul's is locked under lock and key in his bag, banned 
from using. <laughs> Good old Mr. O as a backup. And what I quite like is the, the way that the, the top of the wall here just leads round to the dilapidated old barn, whatever it was at some point. So, and I have bracketed it because there's too many lights and darks. So I'm gonna try. So I've got another shot set up. As you can see behind me, I've got this lovely little barn down here. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. There's some steps up on the side of it and you can actually stand up. It looks like there was a top and a bottom at one point. Um, we see Mr. Rowe over in the corner. He's taking a picture of a tree, which I quite like. It's leaning over and you've got this lovely wall at the bottom of it. It's a really quite a nice little tree, but I think I'm going to come back and get that on different conditions. Maybe wait for when there's a nice sunset or something like that, or come down for a sunrise even and get a morning glow against it. So yeah, I'll save that one for another day, but I quite like this shot in front of me. I like the hillside in the background and the lights on it at the moment. So let me just hit that and get that shot. Uh, I like the hillside in the background uh, with a light on it. And I'm gonna have to put my two second timer on. Now probably gonna have to clone Mr. Rowe out again in the background. Um, and I need to open my shot up a little bit more. It's gone a bit close, so I'm not quite sure what I've done. I must've moved the camera slightly. Um, but what I've tried to do is eliminate the tree on the right hand side and uh, take it out of the image two second timer and there's your five shots bracketed um, yeah i've tried to eliminate this tree that's catching in the corner and put the other tree on the uh, right hand side of the image and now the lights on the foreground quick take another one bracket shot um, the barn down here is in the bottom thirds and i've got these trees in the uh, right hand side blocking off that side of the image so it's all about this side of the image the hills the light on the hills in the background and the old building whatever it is but i've made sure i've kept this in in the foreground which is really quite nice i've got this little old stone wall with these these uh purple uh fox gloves i think they are and the purple fox gloves look just nice a nice little bit of color just to add to the image so i think that's going to work quite a nice little image shutter speeds are trying to keep the shutter speeds up a little bit higher so that the fox gloves are blown around in the wind so uh, yeah hopefully they'll be sharp enough if they are blurred a little bit then so be it um, I don't mind, um, but I just like that image. And I will add that these fox gloves, my daughter's got three kids under three, one at one, one at two, one at three years old. Asda was selling fox gloves as garden plants. As far as, I'm, I've, as far as I know, and I'm not no ornithologist, I don't know, is that the right word? I'm no, no plant expert, but I'm sure that fox gloves are dangerous and can actually kill you and cause problems with your heart. Uh, so Asda, if anyone from Asda is watching this and you've got foxgloves in your set collection of flowers to be given away to the public or sell to the public, I'm sure you're doing something wrong. So please check that out for us, will you? Um, I took it away from my daughter because I couldn't have her kids picking the buds off, not at all. Um, so yeah, a nice little image, quite a nice little country feel image. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. I can't say much more about it. It's really quite nice. Right, let's see if I can get another, another shot. And we are still heading up the hills. And if I flick you around, I flick you around, come with me. You can see, that's where we're going, just up there, before we start the trail going across. So we haven't got far to go now. I've moved the camera down a little bit lower now, uh, just to get another, another view on the, uh, on the image. And again, I like in this, there's a little green leafage thing and the fox gloves and the wall leading round. There's a building that's fixing on the right hand side and then I've got the barn now on the top left. And I just quite like the, I just like the country sort of feel to the image. Um, it's quite nice. Settings wise, I've been shooting F11, giving me that bit of depth before I focus on the foreground and I focused on the, uh, on the, on the barn, on the building. Um, but the lichens and stuff on these rocks are fantastic. So it really gives some texture and some color and contrast. And the Fuji greens are just absolutely amazing. Um, turn the performance off. Yeah, they're just absolutely amazing, the Fuji greens. And I, you know, I love, that's what I like about the Fuji, the colors. And there's a bumblebee just gone into that fox glove. That'd be cool if I could have got him. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice image, a real nice country feel to it. A really nice, uh, a nice calming image, which makes a change after all them moody skies I've had lately, even though, it looks pretty grey up there. Those two are still down there shooting the tree. And I've just seen a, a kestrel 
dive down for his dinner as well, which was pretty awesome. Well, you know it wouldn't be a day out with me without some rain. Waterproofs are on, rain's come over from that side, getting us a little bit wetter, but it's cooled us down a bit as well at the same time. So we're on the main pathway now, heading up across the top of the roaches, and it just gets uh, interesting from here on in. We're gonna go and find the little lake. Once we find the lake, we'll probably get the camera out again and take a few pictures as well. It's quite busy today, there's quite a few people up here but there's enough space to still um, do a bit of social distancing. But yeah, the rock formations up here are something else. They really are. Look at that. How cool is that? Oh, I'm a bit out of breath. Denise and Owen are making their way up slowly, so we'll have a nose here while we're thinking about it. I may even get a shot of this. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Seems silly not to take photos while we're here. But yeah, how amazing is that? Right, it's time to do a selfie. A uh, bit of a cheat though, I'm gonna get Denise to take the photograph, say she's running up here. Have you done it? Have a sitting down selfie as well. Are you done, dear? Right, she's done a composition. She's done me photo. It's come back down. I do enjoy a good selfie. I might go and stand inside the rocks as well and take one inside the rocks. Right, I have got another composition set up. We're just taking a nice selfie, or got Denise to take a selfie with me. Uh, I'm bracketing the shot at F9, but right in the middle of the image, I've got the little barn right down in the bottom of the image, the barn where we were before, and these two massive rocks pointing out into the distance. Now, I've just noticed on the image that I'm just clipping the skyline, so I've got to lift the composition just slightly, because I can't be having that rock touching the skyline. So I'm just going to come up an extra few inches, that's all we need, just to lift the tripod up higher. And it will make all the difference, that's better. Tilt it down. I've got the sky right up in the top, I want to kind of keep the sky in. And then I want some rocks in the bottom in the foreground. I'm at about 16 mil at the moment. Uh, but I quite like the fact that the little barns at the bottom. I'm going to focus on the big boulder on the left hand side and uh, two second timers going on, bracket in the shot, F9, ISO 160, and then let the shutter speed work it out. I'm on aperture priority, so it'll work out what I want. And the sun's just coming out, so we'll just take another one while the sun hits it, just in case it sort of gives a bit more contrast in the image. And I think that'll do just nicely. to excuse the wind noise if you've got any because I'm still on the rocks again as you can see I'm pretty not that high up but I'm up on the rocks um, just walking up here just to, to do a little bit of b-roll that you would have just seen and I just spotted a bit of an image I got my phone out and took an image looking somewhere down this line and just look at all these rocks here you got one there one there one there one there you got the ones a bit further there and it goes just back off and off and off and off into the distance so i'm going to set the camera up sort of high here and get a shot right down here and get all these lines pointing out into the sky i just think it makes a wicked shot 
uh, loads of texture. Mr. Rose looks like he's stuck in the image. I might have to get him to move in a minute, but uh, I'll take a few. He's having a chill out and uh, <laughs> respite. But what a wicked place this is. There's a lot of people around, so I might have to do a bit of cloning and just wait for them to move. But I'll get the camera set up and then I'll show you what I'm doing. Two eye. Two eye. Trying to get the image balanced is quite difficult because I want this big rock down here in the foreground next to you because that is just fantastic. But I don't want it joining the one behind it, so I've got to move the tripod around a little bit at a time. The legs right on the edge down here, and the wind is quite strong. I'm right open now at 10 mil just to try and get it all in. I think I think that'll do me. It just leads you right the way down through the image, and I'm sure that the wind on this microphone is horrendous, so I'm ever so sorry. Uh, I'll get the shot, and then I'll show you what the image is like. I'm going to tilt it down slightly. I think that's going to work quite nicely. It's just, I love all these diagonal lines. Two second timer on. I'm going to bracket the image again. I'm going to go at F11 this time to give me some depth through the image. I don't want to be focus stacking it. Focus on the foreground rock. Two second timer, there's a few people in the image. If I've got to do a bit of cloning, then so be it. I'm going to wait a few seconds, let people move around a bit, and then I can blend them out, different positions they're in. But I just like all them lines, I think it's fantastic. rock formations absolutely fascinate me and I've said this many a times in my videos uh, I'm always blown away by them but one thing I know one thing I have learned and found out is when you look at these rocks and bearing in mind this was all the bottom of the sea or bottom of whatever it was the lines on this part there are going that way the lines on that part are going that way and then the lines further up are going that way and what that is is the different directions of the current apparently as the current is flowing through so that's pretty amazing. I think that we were underwater that, you know, at those amount of times. No touching. <laughs> right, so we made it up to the trick point, which is uh, obviously the highest point around here. And it's very windy. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna head along a bit further now, down. We're gonna follow the ridge all the way along and go back down the other side, because the car's sort of about halfway along down here. So ready to find this pond. <laughs> 